Today I'm going to show you how I install a float valve on my hydroponic basins. Um, in the last week or so the weather's been getting kind of hot and the plants are drawing a lot more water. So my first hydroponic system that I set up is has ran dry once or twice now in the last two weeks. So I ordered the parts and I'm going to show you how to install a float valve in your bucket so that when the water goes this way, when the water gets low this will sink and it will open a valve that will let water in so it'll keep your this float high which determines where the water level is in your basin so your basin will not run dry because it will all automatically top itself off with water um, the kit that I bought it comes with these two fittings we're not going to use the blue one we're going to use this one which is a quick connect uh, reverse osmosis fitting so this this will go inside the basin this part will go outside and you will screw this onto the outside so you will install a quarter inch reverse osmosis line to this that runs to this adapter that connects to a hose fitting so I'm gonna have it directly connected to a water source that has an open valve and it will just automatically tap itself off so this I ordered on Amazon also and it's a three quarter inch hose thread swivel to quarter inch tubing adapter. I'll post both links for both of these. Um, I think this was $9 and this one was four or five. Um, I already had some reverse osmosis line from the previous build that I did on the second um, hydroponic system that I built. So I will show you the step by step. So what we're gonna do is just, I'll, I'll go over it really quick. So we're gonna drill a hole that's a little bit bigger than this part right here. You're gonna unscrew this put it through and then tighten this washer on the outside so there is a rubber gasket that will prevent leaks uh, you're gonna screw this on the on the outside of the basin and that's gonna complete your seal it's gonna press this washer against your basin and prevent it from leaking the basin that this one's going on is rounded so I'm not sure if it's gonna work so I'm gonna install it high and I'm gonna have this float valve aims straight down so that the water level will be maybe two to three inches below the the outlet or this the the drilled hole that i'm going to make so it shouldn't leak water because the water level will be down here but it'll still automatically tap itself off when the water level drops it'll open it so i'm going to first start by drilling a hole into the basin I'll show you my drill and the drill bit that I have the drill bit is actually smaller than this so I'm gonna have to work it around a bit go really slow don't don't try and do it too fast and crack your basin that's the main thing you don't want to crack your basin so take it slow and just make a nice smooth hole these are the only tools needed the drill for making the hole I would suggest making the reverse osmosis line nice and straight uh, mine was a little bit crooked so that might have been why it was leaking the file and sandpaper is what I use to smoothen out the hole. That way it doesn't leak if the water level does get up to there for some reason. And some zip ties to make it nice and tidy over there. Here's the drill bit I'm going to be using. And here's the basin I'm going to be putting it on. So I think I'm going to put the hole right around here and then run the line up on top of this fence, down, and then run it along the ground into to the host spigot right there. All right, I'm gonna put the hole in the basin right now. Now the hole's just barely big enough to screw this in. I'm gonna clean it up with sandpaper and a file. And then once I can get it to slide through, then I'll put it, put it on and I'll show you how I do that. So I've now cleaned up the hole. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle because the gasket itself will seal the hole. It just has to be just barely big enough for it to slide through the inside. I'll show you how that's done. To adjust which way the, the float valve works, or the, where the float sits, you see this right here? That's where you adjust where the height is. See how it hinges there? So you just you set it to where you want it. So I think I want it right about there. And I'm going to tighten this nut right here. 
So we're gonna push it through the inside to the outside, and then I'm gonna take this washer and tighten it on there. So I actually did some finicking, and I'm gonna have it sit like this on the inside. So I wanted the level a little bit higher, so here we go. Tighten the nut on there. Pretty tight, doesn't have to be real tight, or you don't have to use a, uh, a tool or anything like that. Hand tight is fine. I want to make sure it's sitting in there nicely. So there we go. Close the lid. Now you're going to take this, screw it on. There's your reverse osmosis line. Take off the blue piece. I'm going to attach reverse osmosis line into here. Very easy. Put the blue thing back in. Don't drop it. Okay. Then I'm going to run it along this fence. So here's the spigot line. We're going to just put this on here. It has a filter on the inside as well as a gasket, so there's actually two gaskets on here. So we're just going to screw it on, hand tight. And then we're going to put this reverse osmosis line in here. It's a compression fitting, so you just press, press it in. There's no blue tab or anything to hold it on there. It was pretty tough last time, so I'm not going to do this on camera because I'm holding the phone and I don't want this to be jerking all over the place. So I will show you what it looks like when it's done. So here we go. It's pushed in just like the other one back here. So eventually I might run a splitter off of the splitter so that I can have a hose connected. So I'll have, you know, two of these and then another splitter with a hose connected so I can water plants in the garden. But right now it's pretty much automated so I don't really need a hose over here. So it'll just sit like this for a while. So I ran the line along the fence with some zip ties. I'll trim them up, but that way I don't step on it or anything. There's some excess line over here, but I might trim it a bit, but it can just stay a little bit long for now. I'll probably cut it and make it a little bit more exact like this one over here. Um, but if it's working, it, it should turn on once I open this valve right here. We'll check it for leaks. I can hear it working over here. Hear it turn on. So there's a slight leak here, so I'll probably have to press it in a little bit more. I was able to fix the leak, so what ended up being was the end of the drip line was, or the reverse osmosis line was kind of diagonal. So for some reason I think it was leaking that way or it could have been something else but I just pulled it back out, cut it nice and straight and then pushed it back in and it, it seems to be working fine now. As you can see, it's now filling up the basin. It should cut off here pretty soon. As soon as it hits its water level, it should be at. So whenever water evaporation or the plants take in the water, it'll just refill itself up to that line. Again, here's the float valve line that runs all the way to the spigot. Over there. And I can turn it off at any time if there's a problem or something or leaking. I can just turn it off and then fix it. And, but I haven't had a problem with this one yet, and it's been just over a year now, or about a year now, without a single problem with it. Same exact setup for both of them, and it works really nice. As you can see, it's running about 15 feet or so. Pretty good distance and no problem. The water's not all the way on. I didn't want to put too much pressure on it. The, the line was really hard to get off, so I ended up using these pliers to grip the line and then I held the white piece in my hand and pulled it apart. Um, I had these as backup just in case, but I didn't end up needing them, but it should kick off here pretty soon. So this is how it works. When the water level drops, the float drops and opens up water. As the water level rises, it kicks it back on. So it works really well. Nice and simple. That's how you
how do you prevent your hydroponic basin from kind of drying itself out and running dry. Um, it's an easy float valve to make and uh, hopefully you'll be able to utilize this in the future in your builds. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.